So I actually want to start here uh, because I, I find this interesting, um, and there's a lot of outrage over this. Here's a Forbes article. Two bills that could loosen child labor laws are moving through the Florida legislature, making it easier for teens to work longer hours in more dangerous jobs as the state battles a labor shortage, which some critics say is made worse by a crackdown on undocumented immigrant workers. Um, a, uh, a Florida bill that was passed by a state Senate committee Wednesday could allow 16 and 17 year olds to work on construction projects in residential areas as long as the projects are lower than six feet, a revision from the original text that sought to allow the teens to work on roofs. Uh, a separate bill called Employment and Curfew of Minors is moving through the State House Legislative Committee and uh, intends to allow 16 to 17 year olds to work up to 40 hours a week. 30 is the current law, even when school's in session. The latter bill, introduced by Republican State Representative Linda Cheney, would force 16 and 17 year olds to be given the same amount of breaks as adults, a change to the current law, which requires 30 minute breaks every four hours. Um, so everybody would get the same amount of breaks in that case. Um, so that's kind of the law and a lot of problems with the way that this is reported. And we'll, I mean, we'll kind of get into it, but first of all, force, but force, there's, there's no bill that's forcing any, there's no bill forcing 16 and 17 year olds to go get jobs. Like that's not, that's not, it's not forced labor. Um, but what the bill would do is it would make it a little bit easier for, um, people under the, for, for, you know, for people under the age of 18, for kids to get jobs. Um, and uh, the, the media is lamenting that in large part. I mean, they, they, get, they give the game away right, right at the top. They're lamenting it primarily because it will take jobs away from illegal immigrants. Our kids getting jobs will take jobs away from you. We can't have that. That's not fair. It's not fair if our, if our own children can have jobs because then that means that, uh, you know, uh, uh, some 35-year-old illegal immigrant who's not supposed to be here in the first place won't be able to get one. Um, Anyway, so here's a here's a clip that went viral of one Republican talking about um, the need for the bill, and, and people were upset about what he says here. I mean, you tell me if this is upsetting. Let's listen. We've been weakening our society uh, since before my time. Uh, I, you know, I started working at like 13 years old, a full-time job. I wrestled. Uh, I played every sport you can imagine. So the idea that, that they can't afford to, to have these kids do this is, is an anomaly for me in my mind. If there's an issue with inflation, uh, we should address that with, with the federal government, not, not the state of Florida. So I appreciate you running this bill. Uh, you guys continue doing the great work and, and help change your youth, the youth uh, out there to have them start working full time. Thanks. Great. great. Rep Barrington, you're up. Okay. So that's supposed to be some kind of outrageous statement from the Florida state rep. The left is really mad about it. Um, in fact, there, there's been on social media a general leftist panic recently over child labor, quote unquote child labor in... Um, in uh, uh, in Florida and, and and elsewhere, and they're very upset that child labor is making a comeback, according to them. And I put quotes around child labor because that obviously has a certain like when when they use that phrase, it brings to mind, even though it's technically like if a, if a kid has a job, like a job, even if they're working b behind a cash register, like the job is labor, and uh, and they are kids if they're under the age of eighteen, um, but. The, the phrase child labor is supposed to bring to mind like kids working in mines and on factory assembly lines for 18 hours a day. That, that's, that's, what it, that's what that phrase kind of brings to mind. And that's why they uh, use it. But anyway, they're, they're saying that child labor is making a comeback. Very upset about it. Um, here's another video in this vein. So somebody posted this clip of a kid working at a Burger King. I don't know who took this video. I mean, the kid's just working there, and somebody comes in and takes a video of him. Uh, and uh, this video got like 5 million views. A lot of people very upset about it, uh, saying, you know, this poor kid is like he's basically a, a slave. This is terrible. Um, and and uh, we blurred his face because he's a kid, but but here it is. What are your specials? Uh, we have a two for seven on our original chicken sandwiches and a two for five on our Wapa Juniors and our BK wraps. And also you can get six cookies for two fifty. Um, may I just have one cheeseburger to go, please? One cheeseburger? Is that all for you today? That would be all. All right. That would be $2.11. $2.11? $2 it's $1.99 plus tax, ma'am. I'm sorry. Cheeseburgers at McDonald's were used to be $0.69 cents when I worked there for my first job. Oh. Hello. Hello. What? If you want any napkins, they're right over there. 
Wow, how horrifying. I mean, how terrible. This kid is better at his job and provides better customer service than like 99% of fast food employees. That, that's the only bad thing I see here. That's the only, It's that and also that the woman is hassling. What are you hassling the kid for about the price of the hamburger? What, <laughs> what is he going to do about it? Um, it's the only thing that's like shocking and appalling about that video is that this kid this is like his first job. He's probably been working there for, you know, it couldn't have been very long. And he's significantly better than almost everybody you encounter who, who's working at a fast food place outside of Chick-fil-A. So that's Burger King. Like, by Burger King standards, my God, this, this, this kid should be the general manager of that store. That is, that is, because that would be, that, that's, that's above average customer service for Chick-fil-A. But you put that at Burger King, I mean, we've talked about this before, but the, 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 the customer service at Burger King is, it's aggressively, it's like almost violently angry when you walk in. You walk in, they start throwing, they throw like shoes at you as soon as you walk in the door. They just, they hate you so much for being there. The fact that this kid's got, got a smile on his face and he's interacting um, by Burger King standards, that is, he's, he's employee of the year, the, globally, already. Well, if you're like me, there's not a day that goes by that you don't call or text someone you care about. I'm constantly on the phone, gabbing away. Everyone knows it. My friends at Pure Talk are making it easier and more affordable to connect with the most important people in your life. Pure Talk gives you phenomenal coverage on America's most dependable 5G network. It's the same coverage you know and love, but for half the price of the other guys. With unlimited plans starting at just 20 bucks a month, the average family saves almost $1,000 a year. As a veteran-owned company, Pure Talk raised $10 million towards veteran debt last year alone. What's more, Pure Talk's customer service team is located right here in the U.S. and can help you make the switch in as little as 10 minutes. So I challenge you to stand with a company that champions your values today and also provides great service. So go to puretalk.com slash Walsh, and right now you'll save an additional 50% off your first month. That's puretalk.com slash Walsh to save on wireless with a company that you can be proud of uh, and you can be proud to spend your money with and support. Again, puretalk.com slash Walsh. A few things in general about this. Uh, child labor laws were enacted back in the early 20th century. When you had, as, as alluded to, you know, you had kids working in coal mines and doing dangerous factory jobs where they were getting fingers and limbs chopped off and that sort of thing. Uh, the idea was to protect kids from that. And we did. It's good that we did. Um, well, here we are 100 years later, and the kinds of jobs that most kids do or would do are very different. Okay, kids now, if they have a job, are standing behind a cash register in a temperature-controlled building for a few hours a day with lunch breaks and breaks and everything else. It's not the coal mines. You know, this is not a 12-year-old on the factory assembly line for 16 hours with no break. So what exactly is the problem? What is the problem? Can someone explain to me? If you watch that video and you you say, well, it's terrible. Why is it terrible? What is wrong with what's happening there? Um, you know, I had my first real job, I say real job, like my first W-2 job when I was 14. I actually started working when I was 12. I was mowing lawns for cash, but I got an actual job at 14 at a snowball stand. And it was great. I made money. I got free snowballs. Uh, I, I, I learned some basic skills. I got some work experience. Um, I was doing something productive with my time. What's the downside? How is that a problem? Keep something in mind here. Uh, ch- quote unquote child labor, which is like, like kids are doing labor, which is doing some kind of work of some kind. That's been the rule for human civilization since forever. Before the industrial age, so that you get these, these dumb leftists who pretend that this look at what happens in capitalism. Meanwhile, over in China, which is not a capitalist system, they've got like, li- they have seven year olds, you know, making iPhones. Um, but this has been the rule for human civilization since forever. Before the industrial industrial age, kids kids would work the farm with their you know with their families. They would do chores around the house, real chores, you know, real work. And um, and now if they have a job, it's probably working a drive through or whatever. So this is not new. The only thing that's new is this notion, popular in some corners, that kids should not do any kind of work at all until they are into adulthood, until they graduate college. You know. Now you do have plenty of, of, uh, of uh, scenarios where you've got like a 23-year-old adult who has never done any kind of work ever. 
So it's not just like, that's not an outlier. That's you got millions of people in their early 20s who come out of college and they've never done any form of work ever. Um, that is what is extraordinarily modern and Western. It's very, very new. And um, it's obviously totally counterproductive in every conceivable way. Um, what would you rather have kids do? Like this kid at Burger King, would you? Would it be? What's a better use of his time? Is it better for him to be at home playing video games for seven hours a day? Is it better? Would you like? Is it better if he's sitting on the couch scrolling TikTok? Is that like if you don't want kids to work any kind of job? What would you prefer for them to be doing instead? Uh, it's pretty clear that whatever they'd be doing instead, it's, it wouldn't be as productive or as good for them, uh, as good for the, the the child as the experience he can get at a job, provided the job is safe and it's not and it's you're, you're not, uh, um, you know, you're not treating the kids like slave labor. Provided that's not happening, which it isn't at Burger King, uh, then I don't, you know, it, it's it's absurd. It's something else to consider. Too is is like why have kids always historically done some kind of work? Well, because because yeah, it's good for them. It helps them gain skill and experience and maturity, but also because their families needed it. So if you lived at a, on a farm in the year 1752, you needed your children to help. They had to. It was a necessity. It was a survival necessity. Everyone had to contribute. You know. Um, and, uh, and, and, and the point is that part of the advantage of a child working is the child is then contributing in a real and valuable way to the family. So um, if we come in and say, no, no kids allowed to work, it makes us feel bad to see the poor little guy behind the cash register. Well, now in many cases, you've just created an additional financial strain on the family. Uh, when a kid is 14, 15, and uh, has a job, you know, make some money, and if you, you know, maybe maybe that new pair of shoes that he wants, he can buy with 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 the money that he's earned. That sort of thing. Like this, this really matters to families. It's a big uh, help, and we've just got this idea now that it just it, it can't be allowed. You know, you, you can't have anyone under eighteen in in a family who's contributing in any way financially to the household. It's a totally it. It's just it's the kind of thought process people engage in when they're. When they're not thinking, there's actually no thought process at all. It's just like this instinctive modern reaction to something. If you'd like to see what else I have to say, you can access my full show by going to dailywire.com or by going to the Matt Walsh Show Twitter page. Hope to see you there. Godspeed.